Hey guys, I'm Nicole. I'm really excited to share another writing exercise with you today, and this one is going to help you to write compelling characters, whether you're working on a novel or a short story or even a nonfiction book. And I call this exercise the dinner table exercise, and I found it while reading Robert McKee's book, Story. So McKee is famous for his screenwriting workshops that have been attended by Academy Award winning writers. And in this book, he shares pretty much everything that he would have taught in those workshops. And this means that he does reference movies and screenwriting a lot, but really the principles of storytelling that he shares are universal no matter what kind of story you're writing. A quick note that the book does contain some strong language and it does address some mature themes because of the films that he talks about, so just keep that in mind if you do pick up a copy of this book. But I have found it really helpful when I was working on the first draft of my novel and I decided to read it again as I I am now in the editing process of that novel. So let's get to the writing exercise. So I came across this writing exercise. It wasn't really a writing exercise in the book, but I think it can be turned into an exercise that will be really helpful. And it is in chapter eight of the book where he's talking about cast design. And basically that means the characters in your story. And I think one of the problems that you can run into when you are writing a story is that you don't have well-rounded characters. So maybe your protagonist, you spend a lot of time developing their character, you spend a lot of time developing the antagonist, but then the other characters in the story are not as well developed. And sometimes you might even have a huge cast of characters that's not even necessary for the story. And so this exercise will really help you to better understand your characters and develop their personalities. So to cut to the writing exercise, Robert McKee gives this example of a dinner table. And he says that if all of your characters were sitting around a dinner table and something happened out of the ordinary, for example, he gives the examples of somebody spilling their wine or of somebody announcing, I'm getting a divorce. He says that all of the characters around the table should react in a different way. If two characters or more react in the same way, then you have a problem with your characters there. And those characters maybe could be turned into just one character. For example, let's say somebody spills the wine at the dinner table and you have one character who jumps up and their response would be, how on earth could you spill that wine? Another character says, what's the matter? Is there something wrong with you that you knocked the wine bottle over? And a, you have two other characters, however, who both jump up and say, we're going to go get napkins to clean up this mess. You shouldn't have two characters that respond in the exact same way to that problem. So basically with this exercise, what you would do is you would put your characters into a situation where you could test how would they react to a problem that is going on? What would their reaction be? So maybe a dinner table wouldn't work for your story and you can think up some other situation to put your characters into, but then look at their reactions to that situation. Do you have characters that would have an identical reaction? Then you might not need both of your characters in the story, or it might be that you haven't really thought deeply into the personalities of those char characters and maybe you can develop them further. For example, we have this example of these two characters who both jump up and say, we're going to go get napkins. Now, they seem to have the same reaction, but maybe when you think about it a little bit further, you realize that, okay, we have one character who would jump up immediately, but then the second character kind of hesitates and waits until they see what the first character is going to do. So maybe they're actually a follower, while the first character is the one who's the one who's always taking action, and the other character is sort of responding to that character. So this exercise is actually really good so that you can evaluate your characters to see what their personalities 
are and what their motivations are so that if you have situations in your story, maybe you have a character who reacts in a certain way, but in reality, their personality wouldn't have allowed them to react in that way. And by using this exercise, you might have to go back and rewrite that scene because you realize, oh wait, this character wouldn't have taken the initiative. They would have waited and seen how everybody else would have responded. So here's what Robert McKee actually says about this in his book. If two characters in your cast share the same attitude and reacting kind to whatever occurs, you must either collapse the two into one or expel one from the story. When characters react the same, you minimize opportunities for conflict. Instead, the writer's strategy must be to maximize these opportunities. So basically what Robert McKee is saying here is that it's really important that your characters all have these different personalities where they would react in different ways because that brings tension into the story, which is what propels our stories forward and makes our stories interesting. If we don't have that tension, then the story becomes boring. So if somebody knocks the line over and everybody just says, oh dear, that's a problem, that's not a story. But if somebody you know, jumps up and says, how on earth could you have knocked over that bottle of wine? Then we're like, okay, why is this such a terrible thing? And immediately we have a story. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that this exercise helps you. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and follow me here on YouTube and be sure to also subscribe to my email newsletter for more writing resources. If you're not already a subscriber, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. God bless and I wish you all the best with your writing projects.